Hey guys, welcome back. This is Rena Wells and I'm going to be doing a channel teaching today for you. So since I've been diving back into this work, I mean, of course, you guys know I do a lot of dark energy work. I'm able to see the darker forces on this planet and you guys know that I've, I've dealt with the darkest and, and darkest of demons and things like that, that they, they don't scare me anymore. <laughs> um, I can face them. There's nothing in the dark that I can't face. And so Spirit is bringing this up because I feel as Divine Feminines move into their calling and as Divine Masculines move into their calling, there is a lot of darkness that you have to move through in your life. And we have to know, thank you, Spirit is saying the enemy. You have to know the contrast. You have to know what you're up against. It is a fine-tuned discernment that's happening on the planet right now. These skills are, oh, oh, Spirit's bringing through that I'm going to do a course on this. Okay, <laughs> I guess I'm going to do a course on this of discernment, of recognizing evil in this world and the psychological manipulation. So stay tuned for that. I didn't even know I was going to do that until now, but this is how we jive on my channel. So don't forget to like and subscribe. Uh, there is definitely about, I'm really feeling a lot of divine feminines first is when you recognize these darker forces, they want to come sometimes face to face with you. Okay, so especially if you're on a twin flame high level soulmate connection, remember that these darker forces came and split the original of God's kingdom on the planet, the original seedlings, the 144,000 twin flames that came here and their helpers who are the high level soulmates that surround the 144,000 as uh, support systems and um, protection, protecting the highest calling. And that group that came down, the original seedling spirit is saying, uh, was the Garden of Eden, right? And we have fallen in consciousness since then. And if you look up the story of Zeus, uh, Plato, I think it was Socrates, was it Plato? I think it was Plato, Plato, talked about twin flames. Edgar Cayce talked about twin flames. The balance of masculine and feminine energy is a real thing. It's in every religion. It's in every methodology. It's in every... Um, legend okay so this isn't new agey stuff this is the natural alignment of uh, the universe and nature okay so let's get into it because <coughs> thank you spirit is saying ground your energy in this moment take some deep breaths in and just learn to ground your energy and be in your balanced state so you may want to pause this right now, say a little prayer, pull in um, any energies that you can for your own protection, whatever you usually do. I always say our father. I've been saying that since I was a kid because demons have been at me since I was a child. Well, every freaking incarnation, they don't like me. Now they work for me. <laughs> now they bow to me. That's why um, when you hit the fifth dimension, when you hit higher levels of consciousness, uh, you have such a purity of light that you will get attacked more. Okay, guys, remember, but when you get attacked more, it just means that you're doing something right. Like a moth to a flame, the darkness will try to find you. And we have to learn how to seal up our auric field and our energy system so strongly that those darker forces are purified when they come close to us, okay? That's what I've been working with with my clients a lot. Wow, I've got a lot of cards here that Spirit wants me to talk about here. We're gonna go through each one is what I'm getting. Um, yeah, I was not expecting that. So usually I just channel these and uh, yeah. Okay, let's let's take a look. Okay, so we're going to take it as collectively as one before I put them back in the deck is what I'm hearing. So Spirit is going to focus now that we're not going to focus like Thank you, Spirit is saying, we're going to talk about the darker forces and the demons and, and, and facing those things, but how to use them to leverage you into uh, your observation where uh, when you got hit by this connection, right? When your activation happened with your person, how it ignited uh, that pillar of light Spirit is showing me. When twins come together, they hold these pillars of light together in the, in the divine balance. And they are situated in certain geographical locations. 
in order to hold the grid work system down on the planet. And if you don't understand grid work system, I would look into what Druidism is um, and ancient pagan practices, things like that in regards to the natural energy ley lines that are on the planet. There is, uh, the earth has her own chakra system. I would suggest looking into that if you don't know about that. So when I talk about the grid lines, spirit is bringing up uh, the original 144,000 and their support group of the high level soulmates had these uh, geographical locations. So if you're pulled geographically to a place, that is your place with your person. If you are pulled, uh, and you can have multiple places, Spirit is saying one will be the activation place that you made in your contract to come in as activation. And then you will have, some will have up to three other geographical locations that they can travel, go to, to hold down the light. Depends on how much, what your mission is. If you have double mission, some of you may have triple mission and working with other twins. Depending on how your mission comes together, you will have, Spirit is saying, your activation site, which you will go back for renewal is what I'm hearing. And then you will have one to two other placements, up to three, Spirit is saying, it depends on what the mission is that you will then be placed or rotating between several locations to bring in those pillars of light and the support team is around those pillars of light that you hold and there will be one home base basically for the twins okay and the high level soulmates so when these activations and and things like that thank you okay Okay, thank you. So Spirit is saying when that activation happened and you ignited something, it, it it was such a high frequency that it levels up all the darker forces to come up to purge. And I can contest to that when my twin and I had our activation. I mean, everyone in the Maloka was purging. Even the shamans were purging. It was intense. And he and I were fine. <laughs> kind of crazy. So when that happens you know that that intensity of god's love is so miraculous magical alchemy alchemizing it brings up naturally all of the deepest darkest demons in what you thought love was like what relationship was like what sacred union is like what we have been programmed in this world over sexiness thank you spurs bring up you know how we look at divine feminine energy we think it's sexy and modeling and what you wear and that's how you feel sexy in yourself it's a really distorted aspect of divine feminine energy feeling the sensuality in your body yes knowing um how your body works for you how your your the life of your cells and the creator force created this temple to keep you alive it is in the honoring of the temple that brings in the sensuality so all of these things that we see with these instagram motivators influencers who model and whatever else it's all enforced by the darker forces that it moves into the chemical response right that's how our space suits our, our earth suits i should say our bodies um, connect to this grid work system on the earth it is through chemical reaction okay and having that discernment in the chemical reactions is knowing that you're operating from your soul, your discernment, your connection to source, and your power of choice. It's very important. Your power of choice is very important because you have free will and your free will choice is always going to be just to choose something outside of your alignment with God. You really have no other choice. You either choose God or you don't. So you choose how what the universe brings in front of you. You either choose your alignment or you don't. There's no other way about it. You either choose fear or you choose unconditional love. And I don't really bring up fear and unconditional love because a lot of people on this journey are fearful of the unconditional love because we are more afraid of the power of God than we really are of the demons. And this is how darker forces can come into you because they read to your DNA line they read to the conditioning that we have gone through over the minimum the last 500 years. The grid work system on the planet has been completely disrupted. So we feel the chemical responses more so than we do in our soul. And unfortunately, the suffering that we go through on this journey and for high level soulmates and twin flames, we pick karmic 
families, karmic situations um, to ignite depression and mental illness and, and all of these trials and tribulations and suffering. Because when the physical body, thank you spirit, when the physical body goes through that suffering in the DNA, deep in your cellular, uh, into the cells, spirit is saying it activates the darker forces that are attached to the grid work system on the planet. And when that happens, that suffering, that contrast shows you and activates within your soul if this is the way that you actually want to live. So we have Cupid's arrow here with the, with the sunglasses. And the Cupid's arrow, <clears throat> excuse me, there's energy moving through my throat, uh, about having faith in love. A surprise, you know, meeting, um, invitations. And next is the sunglasses, you know, watching, stalking, gaslighting, focusing out. And when I see these two uh, energies together <coughs> and how they came out, it is that contrast. Let's go into karmic energies and the demons and the darker forces. Everybody that comes here has attachments to the, to the dynamic realm. Okay, everybody does. It's based on the DNA. It's based on the conditioning. They have had a loop in into our energy systems for eons. And when, thank you, Spare saying now as we are at the point of really waking up, you're seeing it around the world. You're seeing how the forces that control the world are controlling. Uh, they work with the dynamic forces, and they they come in and they siphon your purity of your light and how God created you, especially if you're a twin flame and a high level soulmate, you have a very pure energy that they love. It's almost like a the breeding ground. It's like that is like the the delicacy of what they, you know, when they're having a buffet table, they're showing, you you know, the buffet table to me is what I'm seeing and a bunch of demons coming around the table. They're like, oh, but oh, we have, we have this special twin flame couple coming up tonight. <laughs> <laughs> here's a high level soulmate and you know this is a delicacy that we're having tonight and they watch in the shadows they are observant of what's happening in the grid work system they know when twins are coming closer together so when you get attacked the more you get attacked it means that the light is breaking through they work hand in hand so if you feel that you're getting attacked you're getting slayed you're getting you know, waking up in the middle of the night and these forces are coming at you or horrible things are manifesting in your life and all of this, it, it's part of the awakening process, right? That the light is breaking through and these darker forces are getting downright angry about it, right? This gaslighting here, the sunglasses, you know, it's like this is the demon wearing like the sunglasses. It's like they're vampires, you know, energy vampires, uh, parasites. They, they suck you. They... They want something from you. They're watching, they're looking, they're stalking, they're focusing out. They're making sure that you become enslaved by them, that you serve those demons, right? This is this is where the switch happens, right? Because the way that we've been operating, conditioned in this world to operate is out of our feeling, out of our emotions. And the deeper you feel, the more people get irritated by how much you feel, how deeply your sensitivity is. And you, thank you. And Spirit is saying, because they're unwilling to go to that depth, they deflect onto you. So for instance, a lot of people <laughs> who attack me, which I find it really funny. I actually enjoy the attacks now. It's kind of really funny. Because when I watch it, I can tap into the energy and I know when my twin's karmic is like really pissed off and attacks me. <laughs> does all this stupid shit. I'm like, oh, here comes the demon. <laughs> here comes the demon. Uh, activated, right? Uh, you know, because there is a righteous alignment with God where you know the purification process and you know, you know, you guys, if you're listening to this, you know, you know what's happening. So you you speak and become the expression of God's alignment and the truth of spirit, right? You become the the prophet the 
prophecy, the prophet for spirit, right? You speak that truth. And that truth is hard to take. It catalyzes people. It brings that light down. And of course, it's going to break people open. Of course, it's going to scare them. And of course, it's going to bring up their demons. And of course, they're going to retaliate and they're going to attack. So you see those signs. Don't get butthurt about it. I used to get really butthurt about it, you know, when I would speak my truth. And, and not in a, you know, I mean, I the only time that I really snap is when I've told somebody many times to back off with their energy and they keep persisting. And I don't care where I am. I could be in front of people and if they do it again and that's my boundary and that's my trigger, I may look to a bunch of people like, wow, she just lost it. But what people don't realize is like, I've been dealing with that shit for like three months from this human being, whatever else, right? Or um, for instance, thank you, Spirit is bringing up when I met my twin and then he had to go and he was so afraid of our connection. He's like with the, the model fake ass bitch that was <laughs> it's like let he's so comfortable with the model aesthetically pleasing women um it's really funny because they all look alike <laughs> they all have the same energy it's really funny so because this person was my roommate he would purpose and he had a room he had a, an entire room at the retreat to himself he purposely had to be in my room to be close to my energy but like clinging to this other person um, that it became really annoying. You know, it kept happening every night. They would hang out in my room and I'm like, eventually I just called him out on it and put that foot down and be like, why, why are you here? Like, why are you hanging out here? Because I knew that he just wanted to be in my energy. And <laughs> it's really funny. But those, those, um, right. Spirits bring up those demons, right? Those, that darkness, that woman would never even let me sit next to him. Like if we sat next together uh, on the floor together while we're at the retreat, she would like come in and like separate us. You know, that's what the karmic energies do. They don't like the vibration of twin flames and the high level soulmates. It irritates them if they cannot suck it. And, and if they can't suck from, from the twins being together, it's too potent. It, it purifies them. They will suck from one of them. That's why they choose one, the weaker one, the one that is still elevating because there's one that has done all of this work prior and who leads the way. It's mostly the divine feminine. We create the safe container, the womb, the nurturing space. You know, we are the socket so the masculine can come in and, you know, drink from our well. And this is where this abundance card is coming up with the heartbroken card. So all of this heartbreak that you go through on this journey and with, with karmic energy. So thank you, Spirit, is bring up. When the karmic energies come in and things are being attacked in your world, try to take that as a, as, a, as a flag and be like, something must be changing because the demons are coming for me now. Because if they can't siphon and if your person has cleared off a, a tie or has healed a karmic situation or has hit another level of consciousness and they've set that boundary, those darker forces that have been siphoning off that energy are going to go looking for it with, well, with who? With the same soul. Then they come to divine feminine, right? Or divine masculine, whatever. And they come to the, the other counterpart to siphon. And it's harder. It's harsher because it's such an abrupt change for those darker forces. And so you could be in a really strong place in your abundance, things are flowing and then boom and they bring up like when my business fell it's just like boom it crashed hacked everything that I had to go completely off grid that's when Matt and that was this past summer that's when massive cycles completely end and awakenings happen so I know that something has shifted you know in the connection that some another level of consciousness was hit in our connection and it brings up your own heartbreak okay when you feel those darker forces coming at you, it brings up that heartbreak in order to strive more to move into your greater abundance. It, it creates a burnout, okay? These darker forces create a burnout so that you can move on to other new vibrations, whether that's another person, another location, another whatever else. Those karmic energies and those layers have to be burnt away because we have to end those contracts with those darker forces. And then we move on, okay? Now, to cut ties with, thank you, dynamic forces, okay? 
it's not like a one shot deal. You know, they're bringing up like exorcism. Oh, they bring up, I, I used to actually do exorcisms back in the day. It's a whole other story. This is what I'm saying. I know how they were. I can see them. I've known about these things my whole life. Uh, trust me. Um, they, thank you. When you see about what the church talks about exorcisms and the darker forces, usually one doesn't work. There's so many times that you have to go through uh, to clear the levels of consciousness in order to actually break these ties with these forces. And the more trauma that you've had, the the more that you are here to help change this world. So it, it be, and you only have what you can handle. Don't think like the more darkness you have, the more awakened or, I mean, you, I don't want to say more awakened. You have the capacity to be able to hold um, a very vast amount of light. But I mean, this is where I tell people, oh, you're so psychic. You're so this. How do I get like that? Well, bitch, you need to go through the abuse. Like, I'm sorry. <laughs> I can't deal with that because it's a double-edged sword. It's like, do you understand to get this amount of energy and awakening, you have to go through the darkest of the realms. And, you know, guys, that's like 30 years of healing on my end in just this incarnation because, you know, I didn't have an awakening. I've been born awake. I've been seeing psychically my entire life. I've operated in a completely different way than most humans. So having to work through that and people think it's like such a gift and people get jealous of my gift and people are envious of everything that I do and the synchronicities I bring in, the magic that I hold down. Because you guys ever came and drank ayahuasca with me, you would feel it, you would know it, you know? Um, it's, <laughs> thank you, Spirit. It's, uh, it's a <laughs> such a double-edged sword that... I mean, how much do you really want to be broken down that you have nobody but God, right? That's the point that I'm taking you to that the, and, and, and in between there are many frequencies. Like we need high level soulmates and, and twins at every placement of consciousness, at every layer that's burning away, at every point, you know, not everyone can go to the darkest of the dark. That used to scare me a lot because it's like, why do I always have to deal with it? And this dark shit and God would purposely push me into the dark. Like as soon as I awaken, it's like, God's like, yeah, okay, let's go. You're going to face this poltergeist activity now. It's like the first time I cleared my first home, I got like the, the darkest of the dark of poltergeist activity. Like, thank God I had a friend who was mentoring me there at the time. But it's like, why? Because you have to know how to hold that light. And so all of that heartbreak out of, you know, trying to move forward and not feeling enough for your union, because your union, thank you, <laughs> your union and how you've been thinking about it, Spirit is bringing up, has been how the darker forces have been wanting you to think about union and relationships. What And again, and what attraction is, that's a whole other aspect. These darker forces have manipulated what beauty really is what attraction really is. Again, they want to keep us attached to the chemical responses, which is addiction and codependency. This is why people have addictions, because it gives you another feeling of, in the grid work system, that can mimic enlightenment. You know, a lot of people say, when they smoke cannabis, I gain a certain stance of enlightenment. Now, Shiva talks about cannabis, and I'm gonna bring that up because um, I do smoke cannabis, and I'm not against plant medicine at all. And it helps you in certain ways. But I have seen <coughs> people smoke and use cannabis and remain stuck in regards to that because, thank you, they have not gained enough discernment to realize that when they smoke and they're connected and they feel that they have an enlightenment, definitely they may have an awakening process and see something but darker forces always gives you just a little piece of the truth. They always do that. They always do that. And it feeds your ego. And then it, and then people attach to that little piece of enlightenment. And then they feel great. And then the darker forces, because you haven't healed, right? Or claimed your power against those darker forces, invites them back in. It is a malicious psychological tactic. It's very similar to narcissists and psychopaths who say, you know, I do this for you. I've given all of this for you. They shame and guilt you, right? Or they, they, or another aspect is shame and guilt is one way. 
they give you everything. They love bomb you or they give you the support and they act a certain way and they act like, baby, I'm doing this for you and I'm doing this for you and I'll do this. And you get spurts of their, of their motivation. You get spurts of their ambition and their willingness to work with you, but it doesn't last, right? It doesn't ever last. It is another doorway back into those darker forces. It is to ease the energies at that time. And it's not that that light at the time that they're giving you or that you're experiencing with this individual or the karmic energies is that it's not that it's not light. Of course, it's a piece of light. It's usually your light as a twin because it's so expansive that they've already siphoned it and they're giving it back to you. <clears throat> or thank you, this, you know, the karmic is somewhat someone enlightened, someone has a connection, gets bits and pieces of information, but as it's moving through their energy system in their body, they have already, uh, and it happens at the speed of light is how I'm seeing the, the energies come in. The, the darker forces immediately latch onto that light because they're parasitic and distort it. Okay. So to gain that discernment, this is why the process of going through shadow work is so dark and so intense because you have to move through such intricate little pieces to gain the discernment to know where you are being tricked in the energies and that discernment takes a lot of time depends on how dark you've gone and how clear your visions are and what information you're actually downloading now spirit is bringing this up to I, you may want to go listen to my path a little bit, but I, I've known the discernment because I have been tricked by darker forces. I know what the egoic psychic thing is about. You know, when I was a teenager, people used to, I was so popular. Like people would, I've, I've always been popular in, in that sense in, in the aesthetic world. Even when I, you know, lived in the whole LGBT community and stuff like, I mean, I was Miss Popular. Like it's just, but it was all fake. <laughs> I'm going to tell you it was all fake because people are like, wow, she's so cool. I use that energy the purity of my soul, you know, and my gifts. She's so kick ass. She reads and I could read people and I go to parties and I tell people all about themselves. Like I would get detailed information. I remember I read this one guy's palm at a party and I knew that he was divorced twice before, but people only knew that he was divorced once or something like that. And he nearly shit himself when I brought it up. He's like, nobody knows that. I'm like, yeah, I know. And there's an ego that happens. Well, when you do that, those darker forces come in. And I'll tell you, I've had darker forces really try to come in to my body when I would do tarot and in in when I was, you know, I had a really dark energy following me around. When you open up to divination, right, you are opening up to all energies. It's not just, I mean, you can have as much intention. And this is what I've said to other people where I've gone to other, I don't know, new agey things and you know, I'm not putting, I'm not tying the knot with you people. Like they have some rope ceremony. I'm not putting my energy and touching my hands and binding myself to these people. And people would look at me like I had some egoic thing going on. And I'm like, do you guys even understand how energy works? You guys are unhealed. Why do I want to mix my energy with unhealed people? You know, that is just another invitation to bring in darker forces into what I've already healed. And you'll know that resonance. You know if people resonate with you or not. You'll know if they're dealing with those chemical responses and a mind pattern over the truth of their soul. That takes practice as you're moving through your own work. <clears throat> and so Spirit is saying, you losing your union, you losing this connection, all of those things, right? That you are not good enough. All of the past, all of the reminiscing, are the darker forces moving through you saying, well, where are you not good enough? What is it that you want? And we have to realize that these darker forces have made contracts with our ancestors, have made contract with our DNA, that we have to actually face them. We have to face these things and learn from them. And that's a humbling process, right? To know God's love and your true alignment is a complete humbling process because, thank you, Spirit is saying, the egoic stuff that starts to play in your abilities, right? So for instance, they bring up like, you know, I've had, I had a fall in, um, in my ego around my gifts because when I was so popular, when I was doing all of that, um, something very dark did want to take over. And I felt that, that I had to become humble to God and pray for God's guidance. And then after that point, I actually shut down my abilities and, and lived the way of the world for many, many years. 
until, you know, I had my first child and it, boom, God opened up again. Um, but then I, I only did work with Christ, with Jesus, because I know Jesus is the only ones that work with these dynamic forces. No other ascended master works with dynamic forces and this is what we say like the second coming of christ on this planet the christ consciousness energy is definitely happening on this planet because we are over ramping <laughs> rampant with dynamic forces housing and coming into people okay you will you will start to feel it you guys i don't know if you guys have been walking around but when you talk to somebody there's a depth you can't get with certain people right you're like what's wrong with these people because they have allowed so much darkness to infiltrate through their DNA line. And they're so attached to the grid work system in the earth plane. They're man and some of these people, you know, they're manifesting money. They're doing really good. You know, it's like, well, look at me. I'm doing so good. Look, I'm making all this. Because it's showing in my proof. It's showing in my in my world. Because you have to understand the darker forces play a lot in this new age stuff too, right? It's not just about what you manifest in this world. Because, <laughs> thank you. God's work is slow like nature, okay? It takes a long time for an oak tree to grow. You know what I'm saying? It takes time for the seeds to germinate. And how darker forces get you? They get you because it's quick and it's fast and it feels great. And it ignites something. And it brings up a little bit of truth, but it's not the whole truth. And it falls pretty quick. And that's how addictions work right? The, the addictive qualities that we see when people are addicted to alcohol or drugs or, you know, other forms of behavior. I don't know. I watched the show. Was it on TLC? You know, people can be addicted to all kinds of weird things. I used to watch it. It's like, why are they like addicted to like eating their hair or like weird things like that? And it's like addiction is not just a chemical, you know, it's a chemical response inside your brain, but it's not just because of the drug or whatever else that you're taking. It is a behavior pattern. It is a siphoning of your energy um, to get you to control you to work in the physical stimulus of this earth plane of what the grid work system is now now to move out of that takes a lot of courage a lot of determination a lot of humbling and surrendering to the creator to god force energy and when you start doing that okay and purifying there comes a point i'm thinking of a client some clients that i've had to work with this how to stand your truth against those darker forces and, and prayer a lot so that they know where the stance is where the boundary is and when you start doing that and you become humble to the spirit and and you're working with the energy of, of christ if you especially if you're working with some really dark you know dark entities that are like you know really 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 dark and siphoning and possessive that is the only energy that works it, it really is it is the only christ energy is the only one that does it he's the only one that was able to cast out demons there is an aspect of that that works definitely with the energy grid work system on the planet with energy and I, i've said this many times hinduism and christ consciousness are coming into like some some cyclic uh pattern not cyclic pattern but a cyclic um i've seen the snake eating its own ta tail right it's the natural cycle of, of we're ending um, an era here in human consciousness. Okay, so that's what I got from those cards. I'm gonna pull some stuff for the Twin Flames here. <clears throat> okay, so steps that you can take and start recognizing what's happening. Prayer is number one. Yeah, what's happening in the darker forces in your life. When you get attacked, You take that energy and you transmute it right away. You recognize the energies that they're trying to siphon you. It'll create some type of anxiety, pain, or it'll create a hurt in your heart chakra. That's the energy coming in to implant and attack you, right? This is an understanding that spirit is bringing up. We have the understanding card. To understand that in the darkness, that when you get attacked, that is an opportunity to bring God into the situation. So pray about it when you get attacked in this world. Okay, and you keep speaking your truth. They don't like the truth. These dynamic things that work through karmic energies do not like to hear the truth. They are in pain and suffering because they don't want to look at their own pain and suffering. They feel that that's a resistance. People, humans that believe 
And we've created the society that pain and suffering is a bad thing. You know, you don't, once you recognize that you can actually go into it to heal it, you don't need to actually go through pain and suffering anymore. Your discernment of energy and of yourself and who you are and how you express yourself and not to hold judgments against yourself, but how you express yourself, how you put your truth out there. Okay. That is the true alignment of spirit that whatever you put out raw, just raw. Like, why do we bite our tongues? Right. I never understood that. I never understood that. It's like if we bite our, and I understand that there's certain social cues that we have to bite our tongues in society and to behave. But I don't believe that's the proper way of how we're supposed to behave. I think that's all conditioning to keep us stifled. Because if you do your work and everyone does their work and you gain an understanding of where your own demons are in your own lineage, how you have to stand up against them, how you know how energy works, how you are surrendering to spirit to come into your life in those moments as you're facing those dynamic forces, what is happening is that you are gaining a deeper humbling experience of what humans go through and then you realize what other people go through but that doesn't mean that you have to sugarcoat it or that you you can't speak your truth anymore we come into this place of complacency in our world that we can't speak the truth because we're so uh, worried about upsetting somebody else and this is the fragility of our world you know this whole aspect of pain and suffering and not wanting to feel it and creates massive fragility in our world. And we're not supposed to be these fragile beings. We are warriors on this planet. If you are here on the planet, you're a damn warrior. It is, this is not an easy plane of existence to come into. And so if you, you have a choice, you can either, when the genomic forces come towards you and the dark energy comes towards you and, you, and they attack you, you can definitely play in it an invitation to play in it, that means you're allowing it into you to be butthurt in a victim mentality, or you can rise above it, pray for that person, and ask God to guide you and how to transmute it. And that's how you transmute it. You take it, and then you speak your truth about what's really happening, and you bring spirit through. Very much with how I'm channeling, this is in my work, I take everything and I give it back out with truth, with God's alignment and God's truth. And when that happens, it creates more abundance because... I ain't taking that dark shit. Here we got shadow work. Devoted to your shadow work solitude and doing this, you know, on your own. This has been probably a change that's been happening since the fall or it may go into the cycle of this fall. But fall that I'm seeing is about transition, endings and new beginnings. And so be devoted to the shadow work. When you know your demons and who's contracted through your ancestry line, I'm definitely getting a course I'm going to put out for this. Um, stay tuned for that if you guys are interested. Comment down below if that's something you want to work on. How to actually face these genomic courses. Um, I don't know if the class is going to be that big because I'm going to have to be able to sit with people as we sit and face your demons together. Um, I think that's definitely going to be something. Hmm, interesting, interesting. Yeah, this is about being guided through your crossroads and staying quiet, mute with the union card. So Spirit is saying, how do you expect to come into union, right? If these darker forces have been siphoning your connection for since the time that we came out of the Garden of Eden, right? Out of paradise, out of the, the golden city, out of Shangri-La. All of these different things you hear about Shangri-La, the golden city, El Dorado, you know. Um, those places do exist inside of yourself, right? Um, to manifest it in your, in your existence. Being guided through your crossroads where you've been quiet about what you experience supernaturally, right? Sometimes we feel those things. You know, you look in the mirror and you feel something is not right around you. Or you are, you know, go into a place and something's wrong or something wakes you up in the middle of the night. It's not inviting the men in. Thank you. Spirit is like speaking to them first with your boundary very strongly and then asking spirit to come in to face them head on because that's that's your armor, right? It's God's love. And moving forward and facing these darker forces, we have to face them, guys. We're at a time right now that we have to face it in our world. We are literally, <laughs> all of the shadow work that people have been doing and waking up, <laughs> we're seeing it manifest in our world, like truly. You're seeing how the human population is 
being controlled by the one percent and we can't stay quiet anymore about it and we have to do the inner work to face those demons from the inside so that it goes back to where it came from okay let's get some final messages here spirit that will bring inner union into yourself and then it will manifest your union on the outside but again it's a process of a complete breakdown of different levels of consciousness before that tie of a dynamic force can actually become undone. I remember when I had a really heavy demon come out, I saw it smiling at me in the bucket. And I remember looking at it and it was from eons that this thing had followed me. Like I'm feeling like the last, I want to say like three to 4,000 years, okay? <laughs> that, that this thing on this planet had followed me from that I finally purged it so I'm not you know we are at a point now that those dynamic forces from eons ago are ready to come out and purge and come out it's not it's not that you have a long way to go you've already we are at a point in human consciousness that we're seeing it manifesting in our world that in our constitutions are dying so we there's a new way of of being so yeah those really strong dynamic forces that have kept you in purgatory let's say for the last how many thousands years or hundreds of years or whatever else are coming out now they're coming out that's why we need this kind of work that's why i'm doing this kind of work we have regret unawakened the past and return so staying in that nostalgic place of being unawakened and all of the regret of your journey spirit is saying do you see how that's not empowering you against the darker forces it's not empowering you for a return to come into sacred union if you're listening to this, you've got to have a really strong foot to say no to anything that tries to take you away from God and your path and your destiny. You cannot feel sorry when the demons come through another person and they're attacking you. Remember, it's not that person, that karmic energy. It's not their soul. Okay, Let, let's just get that right. Humans on this planet who are evil and who do evil things or who are attached or who are clingy or come in between you and your person or, you know, they're not evil people. They have a soul that they were born pure into, but they have been siphoned so much by these darker forces. It's really difficult for them to really look at where their mode of operation is stemming from. They think it's more of a psychological warfare. And it's partly a psychological warfare, but it's also an emotional siphoning warfare because we're all empaths. We all naturally feel first. And that's your psychic ability. Psychic ability is not just the visions. It is a feeling place that create visions. So knowing how your intuition works is another aspect too in regards to how to know your discernment and how to work with Christ's energy to know discernment of light and dark. Okay, so when these things come up it is an opportunity to exercise your discernment and to bring God into the picture so that you can be in full alignment to face these darker forces to come home to yourself, to heal and purge and to create that purifying aura of God's light, your, your children of the light, right? So that when you walk on this planet, because we're following, we're going to fall deeper in consciousness, guys. You are going to see demons walking around on this planet more so than you are right now. Okay? The vessels are emptying to make room for these dynamic forces. And those that do not have a strong understanding of their of their soul and, and not wanting to know spirit and who they are as a soul and to know God's love, then... There, some, a lot of people are going to be siphoned. We have to know and stand tr strong to bring in that healing energy of God's light to give everyone a chance to come into your calling, to come into your mission, to work with you. Because if you're listening to this, you're high ascended being. And your mission is going to be changing and morphing based on how the fall of human consciousness happens to bring in more light, right? So... The regret that you feel in the past, all the things that you weren't awakened to in the past, that's okay. Come home to yourself, face these things, and move deeper into a return into union within yourself. Hang on to your path and your destiny, okay? Do, we have a message of concern here from God saying, thief, do not let anybody steal your light. You got to stand up for that shit, honestly. We have the child on the bottom. You are a child of God, okay? You are a child from the universe. You came here with all your gifts. Do not let people siphon them. It doesn't matter how your boundary comes out, how your expression comes out. Do not judge yourself if you come out in a place of anger or judgment 
and you say things a little ruthless and it hurts people. You know, if that's a natural expression that you have to express it, you have to express it. Okay. The fragility needs to be broken on this planet. It is keeping people siphoned in darker forces. We have to let go of this whole bullshit of I'm a kind, loving light worker. And look at me. I'm going to spread light to everybody. That's just, oh, Rena, that's not the way that you express yourself. Ah. Bullshit. Bullshit. Okay. Um, some people need to express more ruthlessly than others. There are people that I've worked with that are so sensitive and have a natural disposition of kindness that they can't handle those darker energies. That's fine. I wish I could express that. <laughs> I'm being honest. You know, it's beautiful that people can hold that energy. Uh, others are just a little hot, well, the heavier energy. That's fine. We need people in all areas of the spectrum to express the one unity consciousness that is trying to manifest to bring heaven on this planet and manifest it. Okay. So much love you guys. That went on a little bit longer, but I hope you enjoyed that. If you want to work deeper with me, take um, a look down below. All that info is down there. I'm booking for coaching sessions and uh, readings. If you want to know the difference, you can email me if you want to know more about my services and I'm sending you so much love. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment down below. If you guys are interested in knowing how to work with these darker forces, I think I'm going to put a course together uh, that came through in this channel teaching. So, ooh -hoo, yay, yay, amazing. Love you guys. Bye.